Welcome to Kingdom Life Church and today's message with Drs. Dennis and Jennifer Clark brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its dedicated supporters. We are here to equip you with the how-to tools and practical effective ways for empowering your Christian journey. Join us as we explore teachings that bring healing through forgiveness and ignite transformation in both individuals and families. For more resources, join our mission. Visit us at forgive123.com. Let's embark on this journey together. Welcome, Kingdom Life Church Full Stature Ministries. Today is June 30th, and we as a local church and those participating uh, that watch on YouTube from out of state, and we're going to challenge you to the Peace Challenge, 60 days, all of July, all of August, and uh, I have to give a warning in advance, though. The warning in advance would be, if you don't know how to deal with toxic emotions, don't try to do the peace challenge. You'll get so discouraged. I don't want you to lose your Christianity over it. Yes, it's very good to do simple prayer first and make sure that you know how to deal. You know, our, our website, come on, it doesn't get any more complicated. It's simple. Forgive, one, two, three. First, feel, forgive. 80% of your troubles emotionally could be dealt with with first feel forgive. There's ways to renew the mind, there's ways to do deliverance, there's ways to do all of those things, but the bulk of your health and healing could be as simple as one, two, three. So that, that way you remember our website too, forgive, one, two, three. First feel forgive, one, two, three. First person or situation, feel the feeling. Momentarily, feel the feeling. And then let Jesus exchange it. You have to know how to give those things to Jesus. And how do you know if you gave the, them to Jesus, everybody? Peace. Peace. Oh, okay. Well, guess what the message is going to be on today? Peace challenge. This is the 30th and it starts as of tomorrow. I'm expecting you to live this out in day-to-day -day routine of life. It's one thing to have peace in church. It's another thing to have peace in your family, work, and school neighborhood, whatever. The real world out there needs, needs your peace. So you need to be people of good cheer and be peacemakers. Okay, uh, before we begin, I wanted to uh, share a little bit that this would be the best tool you could possibly get. Uh, uh, when Destiny Image published this for us in the beginning, they said they had not seen a book on peace like this. And quite frankly, peace in and of itself is not a major topic. Some scholars don't even have an index for the word peace. And yet it's all through the scripture. And if you don't understand that, you don't understand him. He himself is our peace. And this here is the peace challenge. We have it available in the bookstore. You can order it online. This is for 60 days. Things that you will learn in that 60 days per day but also the same repetitive program of activating the supernatural peace of God in all of the circumstances of life. And we're going to teach on how to do it today, but quite frankly, uh, uh, once you do it one day, two days, you'll know how to do it the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day. But you're going to enhance it. Here, here's just some of the, um, I'm not going to give them to you, but in the 60 days, there's at least... Each day starts with a scripture. There's at least 60 scriptures. Now, now tell me if you don't want this, don't do it, please. There's a covenant of peace. There's a, there's a covenant for peacemakers. There's the increase of God's peace in your life. You get to know the God of peace himself. You know the shepherd of peace. You begin to learn that there's safety in peace. You begin to find out that this... There's a blessing in peace. There's the fruit of peace. There's the deliverance of peace. God's government is one of peace. If you don't like any of this, don't do it. There's the rule of peace, the king of peace, the kingdom of peace. God's rule brings perfect peace. Shalom, shalom. Peacemakers are blessed. There's a call for peace on earth through you. There's a word of peace. There's warfare peace. Peace will govern your heart. Peace will guide you. Wisdom and peace work together. Seek peace. 
the way of no peace, wisdom. <laughs> there's, there's, there's one negative in there. There's, this is the way of no peace. You don't want to learn that way. As for the wicked, uh, they know nothing about peace. Interesting concept, isn't it? They know nothing about it. As a matter of fact, when I led this little girl to the Lord whose husband was Buddhist, I could still remember her saying, uh, it was so sweet, she asked Jesus to come in, and I said, he'll cleanse you of your sin. She goes, will he really do that? Yes. And I go, yes. And she says, and she felt the supernatural peace of God. There was a transaction, there was an exchange. And then she said, you know, my husband talks about peace all the time, but he doesn't have this. There's a, there's a false peace in the world, and uh, they, they try to train you in it, but in reality, it's, it's nothing. It's just the uh, ways of the flesh. The Lord leads in peace. We're to wear shoes of peace. Go tell people the way of peace. Uh, I can't go. There's too many. But if you don't want any of those, don't do the 60-day challenge. All right. So this is the booklet, the workbook for 60 days. And it's, there's five areas, and I taught on it last week. The five areas is that peace governs. It guides, it goes and it gathers, it's attractive, it, it guards, and it grounds. Those five G words are something you can do every day to check yourself out. And uh, I think what works the best for some people is you don't do it at the beginning of the day before you had a chance to mess up <laughs> in your quiet time. Do it from the previous day. How did I do yesterday? All right. That's what we're going to cover, and that's what we're going to get into a little bit. But uh, peace equips, peace enlightens, uh, peace increases intimacy. Uh, things that we're seeing uh, in dealing with people, you know, there are people that actually have uh, intimacy issues. They have attachment, uh, or what they call it, psychology, Jennifer, attachment disorder. That's kind of a, a clinical term. But real living is vulnerability to Jesus. And when you get to the place where intimacy with God is, is the one thing to enter into the fact that he loves you so much that the God of all creation wants a relationship with you. You can't get a higher compliment in life. No man or woman can compliment you to the point that Jesus does when he says that he wants to have a relationship with you. That in itself, I don't know about you, but I've always wanted, somebody like me, I'd like to reciprocate, wouldn't you? Well, he does more than like me. As a matter of fact, I could still remember uh, one of the children when we were teaching prophecy many years ago, teaching the kids how to prophesy. The one little boy stood up and said, God, Jesus is telling me that he not only loves you, he likes you. <laughs> Uh, there are people going to the altar weeping over what one little boy's prophetic word was. When it's pure and it comes from the heart and it comes out of a relationship. You know, kids will use different language when they're little. They'll say things like, you know, tickles for the joy of the Lord, you know, snuggle for a love embrace. I'll tell you what, there's adults that don't even know what that's like in God. And so it's time that we learn that intimacy and transparency is where we're going. And by the way, my dream that we have that white stretch limousine. Jesus is driving. The church is in one accord, one mind, one vein, one vision. Don't get out. Don't do like Jennifer's mom did. She got left behind once by by Jennifer's dad because uh, she said, "No, I'm going to stay in the car and read." And he got in the car and drove off. And here she had gotten out and looked for looked at the flowers. Don't get out and look at the flowers. You could be left behind. <laughs> it was kind of embarrassing for him because the state trooper had to pull him over. He left his wife at the, the, the last rest stop looking at flowers when she said she wasn't going to get out of the car. And so I'm in the back seat reading. That state trooper just said, Mr. I wouldn't want to be you for nothing. <laughs> so... None of us want to get left behind like that. So don't get out of the vehicle. And by the way, as the dream went, Jason gave a good interpretation of the dream. It's white meaning, and limousine, 
uh, vehicle, ministry, the church, they were all inside, all going in one direction, as long as you don't get out and look for, look for flowers. Um, and we were all eating red, white, and blue donuts. Donuts are round, speaks of completeness. Red, white, and blue talked about freedom. The year of Jubilee was a year of freedom. Uh, Jennifer's second birthday, 4th of July. Oh, I don't know if that fit in there or not. <laughs> Jennifer was born January 4th, but her parents left and forgot very often that she had a birthday because of the holidays, New Year's, Christmas. So when we got married, we've been doing it now for 27 years, we celebrate January 4th and the 4th of July with fireworks. So she gets a half birthday. So all we need now is red, white, and blue donuts. And they've got them at Publix. And they've got them at Publix. <laughs> the donuts is round. I like the idea that it was a white limousine, according to Jason, because that's, uh, it speaks of prosperity, but it's pure prosperity. It's the right way. So it's a white limousine, a white vehicle, pure, and uh, complete circle. Uh, the only warning that I could see is don't get out and look at the flowers. If Jesus is driving, stay put. Put your seatbelt on and enjoy the journey because he's taking us places corporately. In one accord, and I'm not talking about a Honda, okay, one accord. Isn't that amazing? They got 120 people in the upper room in one accord. Wow. Anyway, we want our stretch limo. Now, understanding the, the peace challenge, we're going to cover just how to do the peace challenge, but it's really quite uh, self-explanatory if you get the daily guide. There's only those five elements that you check yourself with every day. And I learned from a friend of mine many years ago, a brilliant businessman, uh, uh, Sandy used to say, I never make a business decision without knowing that I've got peace in my heart. Because, you know, there's deals that come across your table in business that could be too good to be true, and they might be too good to be true. They might not be true. You've got to learn to go with your gut, and peace needs to rule your decision-making. So um, we're going to cover the five elements. Now, you had it last Sunday. What were the five Gs? Govern, guide, Go gather ground. Just remember the hand. They used to use that for fivefold ministry. And to me, this is the fivefold ministry of peace. Those five elements of peace. If God ascended on high, gave gifts to men, and he gave apostles, uh, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, then that illustrated the hand of God, and it was a gift. And I don't believe he gives gifts for no reason, you know. Like it was an afterthought. He ascended on high, gave gifts to men. And what I recognized was the, the words that they used, they said the apostle governs, the prophet guides, the evangelist extends beyond the local community and reaches out and goes and gathers. And the ring finger, the, the pastor, he guards and loves the sheep. And the little finger is the teacher where the rubber meets the road. Now, I saw, and years ago, uh, when I came up with this peace challenge for myself first, mm -hmm. I saw if fivefold ministry works that way, it's how do they work? They work through the Holy Spirit, right? Regardless of their gifting, it's the Holy Spirit energizing. I saw where any believer, the individual work of the Holy Spirit in them could have those fivefold attributes if they would walk in it and practice it. So the first thing uh, was that uh, even when you worry about what to say, uh, we often run into people say, what do I say to my family when they ask me this? And what do I do? How about when they don't receive what I have to say? How about when they don't? How about when they turn the tables on me and they yell back at me? All right. And they're saying I'm criticizing or I'm judging. Step number one is you've got to get the rule of God. Let the peace of God rule, govern. That first, that first G says that what you will develop 
if you develop that. That means in a hostile environment, not in a church service necessarily, although it can be hostile in here at times, I suppose, uh, but in real life, with family, with unsaved people, with co-workers, in school, what it develops is spontaneity. It teaches you to practice the presence of God spontaneously. Instead of getting wiped out, bummed out because somebody said something, instead you, you're, you're coming to the place to where you, you're no longer worrying about how to figure it out. How to figure out a response. People get frustrated with wanting to know, how do I respond to so-and-so, so-and-so. Guess what? The best thing you could do is get your peace. The wisdom that comes from above is, first of all, pure and peaceable. So, uh, matter of fact, Luke 12, 11 and 12 says, when they bring you into the synagogue, like we do here, we drag you in here and then bring you before the court, you know. Before synagogues, magistrates, authorities, don't worry about what you should answer or what you should say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. God is trying to establish from his government of God or the, the, the rule of God, he's trying to teach you to trust. It's that simple. As a matter of fact, people that we run into that have like an attachment disorder. They, they just can't seem to relate. They, they'll substitute busyness and busy work, activity for relationship. And the process is, is they've never really learned to trust. If you don't trust God, don't expect to trust people because it won't work. You've got to establish. Uh, Jesse Penn Lewis said, you will never experientially know the love of God until you first trust him. So that's, that's step one. And that trust can become more and more spontaneous as you make a daily, a daily rule in your heart to say, you know what, I'm, I will not fear what man can do to me. I'm putting my trust in God. I'm not going to worthy beforehand what I should say or how I should answer. The Holy Spirit will teach me. How does the Holy Spirit teach you? And when does he teach you? When you're neutral and you're at peace. You'll never get wisdom frustrated. Actually, if you get frustrated, you will probably make bad decisions or even the right decision at the wrong time. <laughs> so the government of peace or the rule of peace uh, needs to be a relationship. And keep in mind, when we talk about peace, it's not an it. He himself is our peace. We're talking about a person. So if, 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 if you pray with someone and they had some hurt, fear, lust, being guilt, shame, and, you, and they pray through that, just first feel forgive. One, two, three. They experience the hurt, they release it, and it changes to peace. That peace is not an it. That's God. Doesn't that want to make you enjoy the relationship? Isn't, doesn't it make you want to reciprocate? And how would you reciprocate when he gives that peace? Maintain what he's given you. Because he says, this peace is not only instant, it's forever. It's a covenant of peace that will not be withdrawn. And if it's forever, then if you lose your peace, who walked away? God didn't. You did. The you that operated independently from God, because the you that can do all things stays at peace. You to be able to handle family, co-workers, all the difficult people. Uh, Joyce Landorf once used to call them. Did you? In the olden days, they used to you used to be able to get. I mean, maybe you can still do it. You could get uh, by uh, clothing that was called irregular. And you got a little bit of a discount. It might have a little flaw, three arms or something, you know. <laughs> but small, minor flaws, you know, like that. But she called them irregular people. And the supernatural peace of God, as you learn to govern it, you will, have, you will triumph over irregular people. The peace of God. I still remember that that 
I had uh, some ladies in my church that people were calling Jezebels. And I didn't see the Jezebel in them. I saw strong women. There's a difference between a Jezebel and a strong woman. Jezebel can be a guy, too. All right? It's a spirit. But anyway, they were not, they were not uh, pushovers by any means. And quality leadership was raised up in them. But I can still remember the day that the hair stood up on the back of my neck when, when uh, three of them came to me and said, Pastor, there's this woman. And I'm thinking, these people are not pussycats here. If they're afraid of somebody, it must be Lucifer. <laughs> I mean, Pastor, there's this woman. And the funny thing is, make a long story short, just God just told me to love her. But when you're at peace, nobody can control somebody who's under control. So if you're worried about being a victim or you're worried about being controlled or manipulated, if you kept your peace, it's impossible. You can't control someone who's under control under the government of God or the government of peace. It's the peace of God rules. Jesus is ruling. Peace himself is ruling. Now they will try, <laughs> but people learn real quick who can and who can't be manipulated. Who's afraid of man and who's not. The funny thing is, was this woman that they, uh, my strong ladies were afraid of, was the one that sponsored me for ordination when I was a, a young Christian. She sponsored me for my first ordination as pastor and then started a ministry. But she ordained me based on, not Bible school, based on proven ministry. Sent the papers in that said, truly God's with this guy and he's already got ministry that's provable change lives. That was the same woman. Just think, there might be somebody that wants to bless you, but you're, oh, this, this crazy person, this crazy guy, this crazy woman. If you kept your peace, who knows what God would show you? Who knows? It might be a divine appointment and you didn't know it. I mean, strategically, God places people in your lives. And guess what? You're going to have some crazy uncles, some crazy aunts. I mean, but he placed them in your life to see how you respond to them. Not how you change them, how you respond to them. So you see this first one is something that on day one, you would say, okay, God, yesterday, how much of the peace of God did I have throughout the day? Was he ruling? Or did I let people and circumstances rule? And you know, <clears throat> stress, that's, uh, for men, did I have stress? Stress means you allowed people and circumstances to rule you. Because you could have been at peace in the same circumstance in the sa with the same people. But it's, it's developed. It's a walk. That's why they call it walk. All right. So, therefore, having been saved by faith, we have peace with God. Uh, I think Billy Graham did it many years ago, but he stated, he used to be able to get it in a sermon even, that there's a distinctive difference between making your peace with God, like getting born again, make your peace with God, but once you make peace with God or get saved, there should have been a supernatural exchange to where you had a no-so peace. You don't have to keep saying this, the sinner's prayer over and over and over again and going to the altar 25 times. Once you act, ask Jesus to come into your heart, cleanse you of your sin, and you made peace with God, there should be an inner awareness or assurance that I have peace with God. Then, from that point on, guess what? First feel, forgive. You put off the old man, now you put on the new one. So now as you received him, 
walk the same way. Well, wait a minute. I know that scripture says in Colossians, as you received him, walk. How did I receive him? You opened, O. You received forgiveness, F. Fruit, peace, O, F, F. You put off the old man. Okay, now I know how I got saved. How do I walk like that? Good question. You learn to stay open to God, which the proof of being open to God is peace. You walk a forgiveness lifestyle because you, you need to release forgiveness to get your peace back because sometimes you blow it. Nah, I know not, no, nobody in my church, but some people still blow it, okay? So you open. How am I walking? Open, receiving forgiveness, and how do I know? Fruit, peace. If there's no peace, I didn't really do it. If there's no peace, I didn't really forgive anybody. I gave mental assent to it, but if I'm still do not have peace, I did not do it from the heart. You have to forgive from the heart, okay? Now, that's a basic thing. So what God's saying is you've got to le learn to locate your Bible heart is in the belly, the gut. The expanded Bible says, out of my belly, gut, living waters will flow. That's the proper translation. Now, uh, as, as I received him, I'm going to continue to walk in him, Colossians 2.6. So now, I've located my Bible heart. It's in the belly. I recognize that it's the gut. And think about it this way. Conscience, your little buzzers down here, if you do something wrong, it goes to your head, but it starts here. You're uncomfortable. You go, mm, I don't think I should have done that. Mm. You don't just think it, you feel it. This is the seat of the emotions. This is the uh, door of the heart. And the door of the heart is the will. And you want to keep your peace in a hostile environment. And I want you to practice this where you're with unsaved people. Because it's a little easier around Christians but it's not as easy in the, in the workplace, in the marketplace, where you've got all kinds of personalities, you've got all kinds of uh, situations. They have demands and expectations. If you would learn to keep your peace, and we've done this illustration a million times, but if you're watching by YouTube and you're going to do the peace challenge for the next couple months, you better learn how to do this. The 99%, when we travel church to church, 99% of Christians, spirit-filled Christians, mature Christians, still did it wrong when they're in a hostile environment. They walk into a hostile environment, and the first thing they did was tighten the abdominal muscle, is one way to say it. They put up a wall in their gut. That means you cut God out, and you're in control, and you're governing yourself. Peace isn't governing you. You took matters into your own hand and put up a wall so you don't get your feelings hurt. Well, guess what? That guarantees you to get your feelings hurt because that wall is flesh. And the enemy, the world of flesh, and the devil can work with that real cooperatively. It'll welcome it. How many people going, I'm not going to do this 60-day challenge. This is too hard already. Okay. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. If it's been hard, it's because you've been trying in the flesh to live the Christian life. You cannot live the Christian life in the flesh. All the good intentions in the world are not the same as the supernatural peace of God. So now, the Bible says the heart's in the belly, the gut. The spirit of man in the belly, in the heart, is the sphere of divine influence or the lamp of the Lord. And, you know, when you pray through stuff, uh, hurt, fear, lust, anger, guilt, shame, any toxic emotion, what actually is happening is, the way I learned it, was Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord searching all the innermost parts of the belly. And as a young Christian, when I said, the spirit of man searches all the innermost parts of the belly, that means I've got to be vulnerable, transparent, and acknowledge what's going on in there. You know, it says the words of a gossip 
are like tasty morsels that go down into the innermost rooms of the belly. Well, guess what? They'll stay there if you let them in. If you don't know how to get them out, they'll stay there. And they'll fester and they'll grow. But God is saying, once you learn to locate your spirit, your emotions, and the will is not in your head. Biggest mistake we saw with Christians is they thought their will was up here. That you give consent up here, but your will is the door of the heart. It's what the heart is open to or what the heart shuts to. He stands at the door of your head. No, he stands at the door of your heart. If you open, he operates. You close the door, you're on your own. You're saying, I know better. I'll deal with it. So we, we, we coined that term drop down, and it is biblical. Drop down in your Bible is enduo in the Greek, and it simply means to sink into in order to be clothed. You know, we talk about, about sinking into in order to be clothed. When peace guards your heart and your mind, it doesn't start with your mind. When peace guards your heart and mind, it's because take heed to your heart, for out of it flow the issues of life. This, If you want your mind guarded, you've got to go to him down low. You've got to go to your spirit. You drop to your spirit so that peace can rise up and guard your mind. You can't start with the mind. You start with the heart. When he guards the heart, you drop your mind. You give power to what you give attention to. That which you give attention to, you give power to. You build it like a muscle. So what God's saying is uh, the peace with God becomes the peace of God, and you learn to walk in it. And when you walk in it, he manifests through you as the God of peace that crushes Satan beneath your feet. I believe that there's going to be a flow on this church, a flow of living water that's going to flow out of the corporate bellies of this church, that things that were obstinate, things that were in the way, things that looked like they would never be removed, are going to get washed away. That's it. Because the corporate anointing is greater than any one anointing. And the things that looked like they were formidable objects and fortresses, structured, well-grounded in, in flesh or the world or the devil, and God said, out of my belly is going to flow a corporate river of living water. Just like a flood. Did you ever see on the news stable structures that get, get washed away by the power of, of a flood? Well, let's be that flood. Let the Lord himself be that flood through us. Out of our belly, corporately, is flowing rivers of living water. Now, uh, when you open the door of the heart, he stands at the door. You open the door. You know, we have the ability to... Bind and loose. You know, bind and loose in the scriptures for the church, the ecclesia, Matthew 16, is really to permit or forbid. Don't make it complicated. You have the ability to forbid or permit what enters into your life. Now, as soon as you open the door, you connect with God. You're focusing in on Him like a bucket that's going down in the well. It's not the way we teach the kids. It's like a bucket that's going down into the well. You need to get your bucket down in the well where the living water is. We had a little third grader once raise his hand and say, well, everybody knows there's no living water in your head. So, I mean, let's take it from a third grader and let's, let's get location, location, location. Let's get the real estate right. Huh? And he, he, he basically is saying, knowing what is right is like deep water in the heart. A wise person draws from the well within. So to draw from the well properly is to draw the wisdom that comes forth. Wisdom is the principal thing. Take heed to your heart, for out of it flow the issues of life. All right, that's govern. That's the rule of God. That's the apostolic government of God. It crushes the enemy beneath his feet. Now, the peace of God, of God, surpasses your understanding. 
all my life when I yielded. Bill Morford said that. That was the one compliment that I'll never forget. I like to tell you, I don't get that many compliments, so I repeat the compliments when I do get them. Okay. He said, Dennis Clark has more confidence in the supernatural peace of God than all the reasoning in the world. Because it goes beyond your understanding. If you really tap into the supernatural peace of God that's available for every Christian, instantaneously available for every Christian, and it's going to go forever, that covenant of peace will never be removed, it's absolute ridiculous foolishness to not, in, to not enter into it and enjoy it. It's there for you. If you don't have it, you left. He didn't. Now, Recognize that that peace of God surpasses your understanding. That's what guards your heart and your mind. The peace of God really did always has surpassed my understanding. I really don't understand it, but it works. If you found something that you didn't totally understand, but it works, that's what we discovered when we travel, huh, Jennifer? I'm going, I don't know about you, but I've been on a lot of uh, uh, psychological and Christian counseling uh, uh, dead ends, but this works, and then you need no more. Once something works, you cultivate it, you learn how to cultivate it, and the fruit speaks for itself. Truth, properly cultivating that truth, and the fruit will speak for itself. Now, uh, forgive123.com, I mean, forgive123. The guy that got us that website was blown away that it was available. But he said, because it's as simple as one, two, three, first feel, forgive. 80% of your emotional ail ailments could be resolved with just first feel, forgive. Not to mention a, a renewing of the mind. Not to mention when that's, uh, how to deal with that. Not to mention the deliverance uh, uh, and hitch, spiritual hitchhikers that you need. The point is the majority of your life could be dealt with very easily. Only your flesh wants to make it hard. Only religion wants to make it hard. That was my test in the beginning. When I discipled Jennifer, I said, well, Jennifer's bright, you know. But I said, this, this has to be able to work with three or four-year-olds, or I'm not impressed. If it's that complicated, that doesn't sound like Jesus to me. Well, telling your kid, well, I'd like to teach you these things, but you're not intelligent enough to understand my terminology. Well, then perhaps you, you need to dial down the terminology. Jesus would relate, wouldn't he? Yep. So, all right. Now, it goes from the peace of God, recognizing that the you that we're talking about, whenever Dennis Clark says you, I am not talking about the independent you. That's the part that can do nothing. Why would I waste my time talking about the part that can do nothing? When I say you, it's the you and the Jesus working together, that new creation reality, to where from the heart, you and Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can forgive sin, but Jesus tells you, you must forgive sin. Which you is that? That's not the independent you who's sincere, trying to do it from the head. That's the you that's joined together as an entity, a new creation, a new reality, an intimate relationship, heart to heart, spirit to spirit, breath to breath, coming together. Now, it goes from learning that forgiveness has to go to God's self and others. We always get a kick out of that because God didn't do nothing wrong. We're not saying you forgive God like he did something wrong. You release the judgment that you made, blaming him for running his universe in a way contrary to the way you would like. That's when you get mad at God. Why did God let that happen? Well, pardon me. Call him on the carpet. See how well that works. I didn't know you were general manager of the universe. But it, but it is true, we've, we've dealt with people that were sexually molested, raped. Uh, on almost every occasion, they had to forgive all three. They had to receive forgiveness because they took blame. I shouldn't have been out there out by myself. They have to forgive the perpetrator. And you know, that doesn't set them free, it sets you free. And then, also, why did God let that happen? That won't work. All of that needs cleansed out of you. The blame game 
was done when you got born again, supposedly. So it should be God, self, and others. I don't, I don't judge God for circumstances. You're mad at circumstances, you're mad at God. It's his universe. What he did was allowed you to be participate in the kingdom of God in the midst of a fallen world to see how well you respond, to glorify him, to acknowledge him, to be a blessing to him. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God. Not for everything, but in the midst of everything. Now, I think we got, uh, we got about 15 minutes left. I'm going to give you the 60-day peace challenge. Government, on a daily basis, do this. We already know that the peace of God is also a manifestation of the God of peace who crushes Satan beneath your feet. But there's only five things you got to do on a daily basis to participate for the next two months. Point number one. Go to the previous day. You can either do this at night or the previous morning of the next day. But how well did I do for a whole day maintaining my peace? Did it rule? And write down, let the peace of God rule over all circumstances and all people. How did I do? If I was tempted, yes or no, did I release, release it? You know, temptation's not sin, but if you get, but there's times you want to, <laughs> like, oh, I could just slap that guy at work. Oh, but uh, uh, let it go. When you let it go, you didn't sin yet. You don't have to ask for forgiveness for temptation. I used to, as a baby Christian, I had asked for forgiveness even for the temptation because it learned that it cut it shorter, quicker for me. It taught me spontaneity to deal more quickly with something. Now, if you did sin, did you forgive God, self, and others? Did you need to do all three? Did you just do one? What was it? Yes or no? Step one. How, that, this would take a minute. It takes me longer to say it than it would for you to do it. So how did I do yesterday with the first G, govern? Did the peace of God rule? How well did I do? Yes, no. Did I deal with temptation? If I sinned, did I forgive, receive forgiveness? All right. The next one. Element number two, peace guides. This one is important because you're in a you're in a at work or school or society that includes saved and unsaved people. You are being pressed to do. You have to learn to stay in peace. And let the peace of God rule like the umpire. Let him call the shots. Same verse of scripture, but a different aspect. Instead of just rule, let him call the shots. Let peace call the shots. You don't know what to do? Don't be, I don't know what to do. That ain't going to get you anywhere. Acknowledge that you don't know and get your peace. And let peace precede all decisions. All decisions. How did I do yesterday? with all the decisions. Did I make them all with peace or was I short with people and just gave them snap answers to get them out of my life? They're bothering me. Decisions without peace today, yes or no? And just acknowledging these five, govern, guide, Goes and gathers. I like this one. This is like the evangelistic part. This is where the peace, saved and unsaved. Influence in the home, at work, and in all areas of life. Was my influence, which is peace, right? That's the kingdom. Love, joy, peace. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Was my influence today in the midst of saved and unsaved people, positive or negative? <laughs> If we took a vote, what would people say? How did I do today? Only I'm calling myself on the carpet and saying, how did I do today? In the midst of family, friends, work scenarios, was my influence positive or negative? My influence. Did I have a good influence? Did I bring peace into the situation? Did people say, everybody's all upset at the meeting, but you stayed calm? That, then you could say, 
my influence was good. I, I kept my peace when everybody else was going a little goofy. All right? The next one was two questions under uh, peace that goes and gathers. The shoes of peace, the proclaiming peace, keeping us in the bond of peace. Was I influenced by the atmosphere, negative or positive? How did I do? Okay, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I didn't react like the other people reacted, but was I bummed out the rest of the day? In other words, the first one was, what was my influence in the group? The second one was, was I influenced by the group? Positive or negative? The next one, peace guards. Peace guarded my heart and my mind today. I didn't put up that wall. You know those walls when, uh-oh, there's, there's Sally. Uh, uh, no walls today. I kept my peace in the presence of Sally, who looked like she was ready to shoot somebody. But I just kept my peace. No walls. No stress. Men, use the word stress because you're not real strong on your emotional, uh, verbal communication. But you can handle stress. Stress means you're being controlled emotionally by people or circumstances. This is the one you want to see some improvement in. Because stress is real easy to blame people and circumstances. It's just easy. In this world, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. One translation says, I've removed its ability to harm you. So why would you fear man and get all bummed out and stressed out if they can't harm you when you're at the place of peace? Today, peace guarded my heart. I didn't have any negative emotions. <laughs> and when stuff went wrong, the next one was... I responded, not reacted. You get a gold star for that one. Something happens on the road. Uh, God says, oh, look what's in your heart. That person that just upset you on the road, they might have just gotten a report from the doctor that they have this terminal illness. But your reaction just showed you what's really important in life is you. <laughs> you, yourself, and you. You, yourself, and I. All right. Now, that's the peace that guards. That's the fourth element. The fifth element is peace that grounds. And this one is like super simple. This one, is, this one just calls you on the carpet. And it says, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. I told you all this so that trusting me, you will be unshakable, assured, deeply at peace in this godless world. You will continue to experience difficulties, but take heart. I've conquered the world. I've deprived it of its ability to harm you. That's John 16, 33 in the message. And solid food belongs to those who are full age, who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern good and evil. Here's the question. And by the way, you will never be, I don't care how much you know, you will never be more spiritually mature than your emotions allow you. So your maturity level spiritually is equivalent to how well you have emotions under the control of God. And actually not just have it under control, because some people stuff it and think they're, con they're, they're really accomplishing. Emotions don't die, they get buried alive. You don't stuff it, you exchange it. There has to be transfers. There has to be true spiritual warfare. You win the battle within before you win the battle without. And to win the battle within, there has to be displacement, not stuff it. What gets suppressed will get expressed at a later date. They resurrect when you least expect it. 
But here's the question for the fifth element. On a daily basis, like I said, it's taken me longer to say it than it would take you. This whole list on the previous day should take you about 10 minutes tops, if you can give 10 minutes to God. The last one was, did you practice? That's like, did you pray and read your Bible yesterday? This one is, did you practice this? Yesterday. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. <clears throat> is that easy? You've only got five things to test yourself with. Did the peace of God rule? Did the peace of God precede my decision making? Did the peace of God influence others for the benefit of good, or was I blown away by the surroundings? And did my heart, was my heart guarded properly by the peace of God, or did I take matters into my own hands and protect myself from people? And lastly, did I actually practice this? <laughs> did I actually do it? If you're going to do it, raise your hand. I saw those people online. Some of you didn't raise your hand. This was because it was too hard. Well, if what you're living is not the supernatural peace of God, whatever you're living is not Christianity. Because the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. You can go to our website at under Watch this Dennis and Jen on ISN, and you can see the show we did on the power of peace. You can uh, check Sid on Sid Roth's show ISN, which then Destiny Image wanted us to write this book. And uh, the Power of Peace, this is the journal. You can get the journal online, and you can see the show that we did on Sid Roth's. On, does it have a date there? Well, it's the, it's the next to the last one. Let me see. It's under next the, to the last one. I don't think that'll help them. When you scroll down, they're in order. Oh, okay. They're on our website, and they're in order. Uh -huh. So it's probably the last one, which would mean it was the first one. One of the first ones. The next to the last one is called The Power of Peace. The Power of Peace. So you can go to our website and watch that program. And also the part that was the most important, where Bill Morford said he was in our church in Columbia, South Carolina, with our church plant. And he said that Dennis Clark has more confidence in the peace of God than all the reasoning put together. And that came from the fact, too, that I had a knife pulled on me in a halfway house and the supernatural of peace of God increased to such a degree that I wasn't about to move and get out of the way, which logic would say that would be the wise thing to do. But the peace was so powerful. I was, I'm not. I'm going to honor God. If I get whatever happens, happens. But I just don't believe it. I can understand Abraham saying, "Well, if I offer Isaac, you know, and I kill him, by, by golly, God's going to have to raise him from the dead." You know, it, it, it was that kind of supernatural faith that was rising up at the time from that supernatural peace of God. So go in peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. You've been listening to Drs. Dennis Clark and Jennifer Clark from Full Stature Ministries. To explore more life-transforming resources and deepen your faith journey, please visit us at forgive123.com and our online school at teamembassy.com. All rights reserved under applicable law. For details, please see our copyright policy on our website. Again, that's forgive123.com.